Okay, I just want to check you can hear me and also see my screen. Is that coming through for you? Yeah, I can yes. hear and see your screen. Brilliant. So, afternoon, everyone. My name is Lee Butler. I'm a GI specialist at Ferris Science, and today I want to talk to you about a bit of work we've been doing in developing a mobile data collection tool for a plant health disease known as Zayla fastidiosa. So just to kick off, I just want to explain exactly what Zayla fastidiosa is. Um, Zayla is a bacterial disease that's spread by insects that feed on the xylem fluid within plants. And how the disease is spread that um, an insect will feed on a, an infected plant and move to a different plant where it will spread the bacterium. And that bacterium invades the water transporting vessels of the plant uh, that cause a number of symptoms, including things like leaf scorch, wilt, dieback, and can ultimately cause plant death. And at the bottom of the slide, there's a couple of images there. So the far right shows some scorch, the middle picture shows some dieback, and on the far left, I think that's an olive grove in Italy where it's gone, been completely decimated by Zayla. And Zayla is quite a serious disease because it's rather than things like ash dieback or Dutch elm, where it affects a single species. Zayla can affect more than 560 species worldwide. Currently, we don't believe Zayla is in the UK, but there's been a number of outbreaks in Europe, and there's a real concern that Zayla is going to be introduced into the UK through imported plants. Because Zayla has been so bad in, the, uh, in Europe, there's been emergency EU legislation set out about how we respond to a Zayla outbreak. And this stipulates that when a host plant is found with Zayla, every other host plant within 100 metres has to be destroyed. In addition to this, host plants within five kilometres also need to be inspected to make sure the disease hasn't spread. The problem with Zayla, because it affects the, the, the water transporting xylem within plants, it causes symptoms that are very similar to other sorts of plant stresses. So the only way we can identify Zayla is actually by taking plant samples and having these identified in, and analysed in plant diagnostic labs. So if Zyla was to be found in the UK, there'll be a number of government organisations which would be involved in uh, inspecting the host plants. So we've been working with DEFRA, the Animal and Plant Health Agency and the Forest Commission to develop a set of tools which allow inspectors to collect the uh, Zyla inspections out in the field, um, to link plant diagnostic results from the labs back to these inspections, and then a ways to, for them to view and monitor inspection operations in real time. And we use Esri technology for this because DEFRA, the agencies have ELAs with Esri and it seemed like a good idea to use software that's already available and see what it's capable of. So if we were to find a Zayla outbreak in the UK, what would happen initially would be we'd create an inspection zone around that infected plant. And we've created a geoprocessing tool within a web app that allows inspectors to do this. So this web tool takes a couple of parameters, eastern and northern of that initial finding, and creates a number of buffers around this. The one kilometre and five kilometre buffers are gridded into 100 metre and one kilometre grid squares respectively and within each of these grid squares an inspector will be assigned to it where they'll have to conduct up to 50 host plant inspections within each grid. So there's, so there's potentially quite a large amount of inspections that would need to take place. And here's an example of the web tool. As I say, it just takes a couple of parameters. Uh, it runs runs a tool in the background, creates the, the output in about a minute, and then that's available in a database to view straight away, but it also feeds through to Collector, which I'll discuss now. So we've used Collector for ArcGIS as a way for inspectors to go into the field and conduct their inspections. Those inspection grids are shown in Collector, so once a, uh, an inspector is allocated to a grid square, they can use Collector to navigate to that grid square and then start their inspections. The inspections start by taking a GPS location of their, the, the point they're at. And then it follows a question specification that's been designed by APHA and F, uh, Forest Commission. A lot of these questions just involve drop down lists. So the inspection process is quick. It keeps data integrity. Uh, and some of the longer lists as well, such as host species has filters in place. So you can filter through um, the species you're looking for rather than having to scroll through reams and reams of different species. Also asks for photos and videos to be collected, which is quite important as um, although we are collecting the GPS location, the GPS accuracy on a mobile phone, probably plus or minus five meter accuracy at best. So having a photo of a plant and a photo of the plant in its surrounding environment is really good for uh, repeat inspections. 
We also have a barcode field in here, and that's because part of the inspection process, the inspector will take a plant sample, put it into a sample bag that has a barcode attached to that. They can use the barcode reader to scan this barcode in just to remove any transcription errors. And finally, the tool can be taken offline, so used in areas where there's no 3G, 4G Wi-Fi connectivity, and then synced back later on when you do have this connectivity. So I've mentioned the barcodes, the plant samples. After inspection, these are sent to plant diagnostic labs across the UK. Uh, we've got a plant diagnostic lab at Ferrer, Forest Research has one, and SASA have one at Scotland. And what these labs will do is they'll scan the barcodes in again to a recording spreadsheet where they'll do the diagnostics on that plant sample and they record the results against that barcode. We then developed a web portal that allows the different labs to auto upload their results where they're stored into a central database. And this is the data portal. It's just a simple online portal that we created. Users log in and then in this situation they can upload their results as a CSV file. There is some intelligence built into this upload, so it will make sure that the data that's required uh, as part of the upload process is present before it will allow the upload to take effect. And then once it's um, uploaded, it stores it into that central database. Following this, we've got a couple of Python scripts that run each evening. And the first of which is a, a script that takes all those lab results, looks through all the barcodes that have been uploaded along with the results, and then joins that barcode back to the barcode of the inspection that's been out in the field. So now we know where that inspection was uh, was taken. We've got spatial location. But we've also got results back from the lab. Was it positive, negative, or inconclusive for Zyla? In addition to that, we've got another script that kicks off. So for any positive finding, we've then got a script that will create those inspection zones around that positive. So in effect, we've closed the loop. Any new positives will automatically generate that inspection grid that then could be used for more inspections. Off the back of all this, we've got a couple of web apps we've created. Uh, we've got a web map that shows the spatial locations of all the inspections that are being done, uh, as well as the locations, all the results that have come back, so we can see where new positives come through. Uh, the data is all secure, requires silent to view, um, and it shows the inspection data in real time. Uh, so as soon as the inspections have been conducted, so long as they're not using a, an offline capability, it will be shown on the map. And then we've just included a couple of bespoke web tools in here as well. I've mentioned already the grid creation tool that's available to the inspectors. But we've also got a reporting tool, which takes the data, allows you to filter it and export it out as an Excel spreadsheet, which then feeds into situational reports that are required by DEFRA when there is a plant health outbreak. We've also created a dashboard where, again, you can see the spatial location, but it also uh, highlights some key metrics in, in these graphical interfaces that you can see dotted around it. So things like how many positive samples have come back, how many inspections have been undertaken, and how many samples are still with the lab waiting for the results to come through. And it just provides a really quick and easy way for, for people to view the data at a glance. So I just want to use this slide as a sort of a summary tool. I'm quite conscious I've just dumped a lot of information. So I just want to see, see how um, show you how it all links together. So as I say, we, we haven't, we don't think there is Zyla in the UK at the moment. But if there was, what would happen is that um, initial finding would come back from inspections, either unrelated to Zyla or from a member of the public reporting something. That would be assessed by the labs and a confirmed finding would be, be created. From that, an inspector can use the web tool to create that initial um, Zyla inspection zone. That feeds through into Collector, where in, um, inspectors are then assigned to a particular grid square where they undertake their inspections. As part of the inspection process, they'll collect plant samples in sample bags that have a barcode. That's read in and collected as part of the inspection process and then sent to plant diagnostic labs, where again the barcode is scanned in and any diagnostic results are assigned to that barcode in a spreadsheet. The spreadsheet's uploaded to a data portal where it's stored into a central database. And then a Python script runs each night to join the lab results back to the inspections. Any inspection that's found to be positive then creates a new inspection zone. So in effect, we've got a closed loop system there. And off the back of that, we've got the web apps that just allow people to view and monitor how inspection operations are progressing um, should an outbreak occur. So that's really all I want to talk about in terms of the tool. Um, I just quickly want to finish on the benefits we've found from using Esri technology. Um, traditionally, in, in plant health or pest and disease outbreaks, Individual organisations have done their own thing in terms of uh, collecting their own data in their own way, storing their own systems, 
um, and that's made it difficult to, to pull information together to get a clear overview of how things are, uh, are progressing in, in real time. By using Esri software, we've been able to quickly to create a Zale tool that can be rolled out um, should Zale be found in the UK. We've moved from being reactive to, to proactive with the disease to try and limit it as much as possible should it come here. And, and what this software does, it allows for different organisations all to use the Esri software in the same way to collect the same data and store it centrally. And as it's stored centrally, we can use this to monitor how inspection operations um, and how the disease is spread in, in real time. And finally, all the data that uh, I've shown you on some of the slides, it's all test data. This has been collected by inspectors out in the field practicing with this, this software, making sure it all works. Uh, but one of the things that's been mentioned over and over again is with, with Collector, with the dashboards, with web maps, it's just how simple and intuitive it is to use. It really doesn't need a lot of training. So with that, that's all.